This, uh, this talk is mainly just going to be a, uh, a discussion because um, uh, when I first started working on this, which is, a, I'll get into the problem in a second, um, I started working on a prototype and then I immediately hit about five roadblocks and then I was like, oh, I'll write a talk about it and then I found at least five more roadblocks. So, um, you know, pick your favorite city that has ter terrible traffic, but um, this is that kind of problem. So I, I thought we should at least discuss what kind of things should look like before we start um, hacking on it. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the very short, um, history is that, um, uh, as we all know, seccomp does not filter pointer arguments. So if you have a pointer argument to syscall, you can't filter with seccomp, um, which in the past was not a huge issue because the kind of syscalls that you would want to filter, there wasn't anything useful to filter behind the pointer, um, at least depending on your viewpoint. Um, but with openat 2 and with clone 3 and a lot of other these syscalls that have structure arguments, um, Programs want to make use of them because they have useful features, they have useful security features, um, but you know people don't want to unconditionally allow them um, for, for everything. Um, and so, yeah, they, there is a more general problem of dealing with pointers. Um, basically, the conclusion I came to when we're looking at this was that um, I think that the general problem of like any pointer argument is basically intractable with CBPF. CBPF is just too restrictive. Um, we would need to do something else. So we need to either extend it or to go to eBPF or something. Um, but I think at least it should be possible for the extensible struct use case to come up with a, um, a solution. Um, and yeah, this is based on some talks we had with Case about this a couple of years ago. Um, so yeah, so a lot of this is hand wavy, so I apologize, but yeah. Um, the general idea is that so um, every syscall that takes a pointer argument that is an extensible struct argument, so just for, sorry, just to explain, extensible structs are effectively this bit where open at two, it has a structure and then you give it the size of the structure and this is a way you can version it um, in, a, in a forward and backward compatible way where effectively newer kernels with new features, you can use them, but also um, you can also use on older kernels if you don't use the newer features. But effectively, that's the key point is the structure can grow in size. Um, and yeah, so it, this entire thing needs to be opt-in per syscall because there's, I can't see any way to do this automatically um, because obviously the structure needs to be copied by the syscall body. So you need to, um, the, the idea would be that on syscall entry when a second filter is running, uh, second would make a copy of the structure and then that would be added to second data and then the filter would run on it. Um, and then that copy would then be what is served to the syscall body when it actually does the copy, when it tries to do the copy in the syscall body. Um, so somewhere in struct tasks, we would stash away, this pointer is this buffer we already copied. Um, and yeah, the, um, the, however, you can't just copy the buffer by itself because, because CBF ha is very restricted, you need to come up with a way of representing it in a way that you can actually write useful filters, um, which is one of the problems. And the other problem is, is that, um, Basically, seccom data is like a fixed size at the moment. I mean, it's a fixed size for the entire system. Like, there's no, there's no, it doesn't depend on syscall. There's, there's just one structure that is for the entire system. Um, however, uh, doing this would mean that the structure would have to either change size or we would need to have like a really big size to think about what all the possible sizes of a, of a structure could be. Um, neither of which are fun. Um, and yeah, the, the notification API in particular, I mean, the notification API, you can just tell them, oh, because they need uh, the notification API needs to know what the size of the structure is to copy it, but you can just tell them, oh, it's this giant thing because you know the notification stuff is already quite inefficient, like in general. So you I mean an extra k of memory is not a big deal. Um, but for the verifier, for instance, like how would you go about verifying this? Like because uh, the verifier is obviously it verifies at at load time. So like, do we need to have a verifier that can load that can know? Oh, these syscalls, that size is okay. Um, and then when we get into the later bits, um, it actually might be necessary for the size to depend on the individual invocation by the program, which would be even more annoying to deal to deal with. Um, and yeah, so a little bit more concrete, it would be. Um, each syscall, you would have an extra section that would have metadata that would contain uh, what the pointer and size arguments are um, and what the current maximum kernel size is. Um, and then one optional thing would be to have a list of all the historical sizes. Um, the reason why this might be useful will, will come, become apparent in, in a second, but that's not entirely necessary. Um, and then, yeah, the second data would have the pointer to the structure. This is optional because um, you can't, the CVF can't do anything with it. Hypothetically, with eBPF, you could use the pointer to then call some function, but that's, so maybe we would want to include it just for future compatibility, so we don't have to re redesign second data in the future, but I don't know. Um, and then you need to have a flag to see if there's any trailing data past the kernel size. So this is part of the API for extensible structs, is that um, if you have trailing data that is bigger than the kernel knows about, you get an error. Um, but because 
Um, obviously, we can't have we can't copy the entire structure and let the seccom filter deal with it. But also, CVF, there is no way to do a loop. You can't check is this buffer empty um, because there is, there's not enough registers and you can't do loops and so on and so on. So you need to represent it that way, um, and then you need to represent the effective size, which. Because, so this is the this is again one of the things where it's, it's annoying where. Um, you can't just say, okay, here is the kernel struct size, because if you do that, what's going to happen is that on a newer kernel, older filters will no longer be able to filter, because you can't, uh, uh, the, in CBF, you can't say, is this range zero? So therefore, if a newer filter saw a larger size, there's no way it could generically check whether, there was, uh, whether all the fields were zeroed. So therefore, you need to lie to the, to the filter and say, okay, the effective size is basically the smallest structure size that has all the data in it so that an older filter would be able to run on a newer kernel. Um, and then how would you deal with that with the verifier? Because I mean, now that, defend, that depends on what the syscall is passing, so that means that per syscall, the size could be different. Um, and yeah, but so th this, is, this is what it would, I mean, what it would look like. Um, you just append the thing. Um, obviously, you could, appoint, you could have more than one pointer with this, but um, uh, Linus snacked nested pointers um, when we discussed this last time, so um, I think just one pointer is probably all we actually need in practice. Um, yeah, and then um, that's what the filter would look like where you would have, um, and yeah, so the, the key point is that um, because you, you need to check the trailing and the size, and yeah, all filters would need to do the first bit where you check whether, the, um, whether it has any trailing bits or, or size larger than a particular version because there's no way you can, be sa you can safely accept newer fields. Um, and then you would be able to check each version. Um, one of the benefits of, so here I, it uses the like effective size thing where like each size is from a, from a particular version. Um, you could do it where like the size is like, doesn't, you don't care about future kernel, kernel sizes. It's just like, oh, like how many bytes are set and then you could do it by offset. I don't really have a strong opinion um, on which way we could do it, but yeah. Um, yeah, and there's, um, yeah, the, the, real, the real issue I see is the verifier because like, the problem is that for compatibility reasons, you would ideally, the ideal situation would be that um, the size and everything would be like the smallest possible such that it's maximum compatibility. But like, I, with the, like how on earth would you actually verify that in practice? Like it's, um, because, because the problem is that um, the CBF programs, I mean, at least in the network and BPF world, I think, you, I think the program either abort, so you get like, a, like an error. Like you can't say, oh, just give me zeros from this point onwards um, if, the, if it's larger. I mean, maybe that's, maybe that's an option, but I don't know. Um, uh, in this example, uh, you you have it written so that it doesn't filter any of the data fields as long as the structure is like smaller than size version zero, right? So would uh, would you have like verification done by the kernel to make sure the struct is one of the allowed sizes, or would the VPF program have to make sure that if the user passes in a struct that's like between the version uh, zero size and the version one size, or like smaller than the version zero, but zero okay. size, that it, like checks everything that is passed to the yeah. kernel? Yeah, yeah. So, so so this would be so this would be. Um, uh, yeah, so, this, so the, the size here is the effective size. So this is like the kernel, when it's is copying it, it would see um, what is the, uh, how many of the bytes are non-zero. And then it would then use that to figure out what is the effective size. And then you're guaranteed by the kernel that anything after that is zeroed, which in the, which in the extensible structs thing means that they're no ops, like it, it has no effect. Um, yeah, but you're right, yeah, it would, um, uh, the filter wouldn't have to check that because it can't, it can't check it because um, CBF, you can't, you can't check for, um, for that why it needs to be represented this way. <laughs> I have some thoughts. Okay. <laughs> um, Here we go. So for extensible syscalls, the size is one of the arguments, right? Yeah. Um, uh, for, for, for most of them, for the newer ones, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, well, I'm sort of thinking if we can solve it for the, the best case scenario and then work on bad things later. Um, so, I mean, uh, so that size is there, so we don't necessarily need it to add, add it to the seccomp data. Is uh, so the problem is, is that the size that you get could be any number. Like, the, the system could, they could put in page size and have it all sure. be zeroed. And right. from the support thing, we have to, um, yeah. And, and so the, the problem is, is that, so I thought that too, but the, the issue is, is, um, is that how would you do the zero checking? Because if you have a filter, let's say I write a filter today, that, um, that only supports the whatever three fields that openr 2 has, and then I add a new openr 2 field in the future, uh, the second filter would, would need to refuse any non-zero bytes, but there's no way to do that because with CPF you can't, you can't there's no like, um, 
uh, this like check zero user. There's no way of doing that check in Secomp. Um, if you could do that, then you wouldn't need the you wouldn't need to have any of the magical size or trailing handling because it would just. Um, so you you want to distinguish the syscalls in the filter. Like you in, uh, is what you're saying. You're basically you want to be able to provide support with a filter for multiple versions of user space uh, APIs. Well, I mean, uh, yes, but but even okay. if you didn't want to do that from from a security perspective, you couldn't. Um, there's no way you could write a safe filter um, for today's API because mm -hmm. if a future field is added, uh, there is no way that you could check whether the field was used generically in the, in the filter. Like an old filter that was designed, that was built for, let's say someone compiled the filter manually and they, mm -hmm. they have been using it for the past five years and now we add a new field, that same filter would now allow things because it that can't really check the thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you... you I briefly mention this, but I think uh, on the verifier side, I think we can we can cheat a little bit in the sense that we all already with extensible structures we're limited to page size. We've sort yep. of arbitrarily chosen that. So I think on the verifier at least we can say, well, we're going to deal with at most page size, mm -hmm. and we're going to have it filled to zeros. So <coughs> the verifier can say this is safe, like execution of the filter is safe because we know at no point do we go past page size. And we have a page size that is okay. backing it, so this is, you know, BPF safe. Okay. Like from the verifier's perspective, I think that's solvable because. Okay. So we, we can, can we can just cheat it. Okay. We can just say it's a page right. size, and and yep. it is page size, and so the verifier is like, I'm gonna go check way over here, and we're like, yeah, sure, go for it. There's no reason to, but but it's it's at least safe. Okay. For the verifier's perspective, so I I'm, I'm, I think that'll be okay, um, and then. Uh, I mean, it's not actually page size because what you'd do is you'd have two pages. The second page would be the new stuff, and the old stuff would be aligned right at the end of the prior page, yep. and that's where we do the calculations. Um, I think that we can um, easily distinguish this in with just with a seccomp flag to, um, like, when you're adding a filter, you say, "I'm expecting this filter to be an extensible filter," and if, if there were any things we needed to handle differently, we can just add as a filter. I mean, to be fair, you, you would get e invel today if you tried to load it anyway, because the verifier right. would, re would reject it. But oh, right. But yeah, yeah. but so we wanted, don't need a flag. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's all I'm saying at the moment. I'm going to think a little bit more about that. You know something from Tycho over that? <laughs> this is a dumb question, but is changing the CBPF instruction set in scope here? Like, can you add a check zeroed user instruction? The, yeah, oh, I've heard okay. that it, yeah, this was knacked. Um, okay. Like any changes to CBF at all? Because again, it's one of the things where like if we could add like two instructions and like two more registers, like all this would be very easy. But yeah, um, yeah. And the other thing is that be, be, the other problem is that because because there's only because you have no scratch registers, like uh, even if you were to add more pointer data, like there's no way you could actually parse it because you can't. There's no way to save what the offset is. So you would need to duplicate the entire filter logic for every possible size of the first pointer. And then, so like, I think because we're locked to CPBF and we can't change it, um, you can only ever do one pointer anyway. Um, for the for the size you were talking about, the effective size, doesn't that therefore imply like we can we can specify, or maybe we could just make it make an additional entry in SecComp data that says, from this point down, it's all zeros, and then we can just check against that value. Uh, right, but while we'll be doing the checking. Uh, the filter, but the fil but the filter you can't do a. Oh, you mean uh, right, um, right. Uh, well, okay, so that's that's okay. That's kind of what trailing does. Like, it, right. but it would be a similar thing. Yeah, you could do it that way as well. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, the, the, so trailing in this context would be like, is it larger than the k size? Not is it larger than the effective size? Because like, but like it's the it's a it's basically the same thing. Because like, yeah. like conceptually, if there's data after the k size, then the size would be k size. Right. right. But yeah, yeah, it's a. But we, but we could have like a, from here down it's all zeros, so now I can actually do a sort of range check in the sense that I want to look in this range. Is it above where the cutoff is for all zeros? Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could do it that way. Yeah, that, that actually might be a little bit nicer. Yeah. Um, one other minor niggle I wanted to mention is, um, uh, oh, uh, so sorry, I should mention that I'm, for fixed, 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 fixed,
for fixed size structures, uh, like statics, so what, I mean, statics, there's no real point filtering it, but if you were to have like something like statics, then um, you can um, you can reuse the same design, like, because the size is fixed. Um, and also, I sent, uh, a few weeks ago, I sent a extension for, extension for extensible structs, uh, syscalls, which, um, basically lets you get uh, what features are supported by a syscall. Um, the only reason I'm mentioning it is because this this slightly complicates it because now the now you would have, let's so for OpenI2 for instance, if you pass this thing, which is the way I did it was that the patch that I have um, linked in the slides, um, you set the highest bit in the size and then when the syscall runs, it copies all of the valid bit patterns of, this, of the extensible struct to user space. The idea being that with that, you can then check, oh, okay, is this flag supported? You can just do a bit end to see whether or not the flag is in the accepted, accepted set. Um, and uh, there's examples in, in, the, in the batch set of, of how you would use it in practice. Um, the, the sort of question for the second thing is like, obviously that's an invalid size. Um, uh, in that case, should we just not pass the, um, any, any data for the, um, for the function uh, to the to second? Or like, should it? I mean, the second filter itself would have to like check it and allow it. But like, this extensible struct stuff probably doesn't make sense to copy because that struct is useless. And also, like, what size would you? I mean, you can you can fake all of it, obviously. But yeah. I think it's also like a, another thing. I'm sure that you that you mentioned, but in your in your example, uh, it ended with allowing it, right? And um, pointers. So time oh. of check, time of use. Like for, for anything that's like passed as a pointer by by the Cisco caller. Um, oh what? no no because no, the, the it'd be cached so like. Oh right, so, right. so that one yeah. Yeah yeah. No, so yeah. and, and uh, I mean like if you have nested pointers, obviously that's all. There's nothing we can do about that because yeah. we Linus snacked nested pointer stuff. But as far as we can tell, like the only examples of nested pointers like clone three and stuff like the. Oh yeah, I have yeah the 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 um. It wouldn't make sense to filter them anyway. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, netlink. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, but um, I guess yeah. If we we can, we can just lie to the. Uh, it would be in struct task somewhere. Uh, Christian asked, the, "When would you cache it?" Um, yeah, it would the, be the proposal I had was that. Uh, the, the entry path would be, if you don't have a sec comp filter active, nothing would change. So you'd, in the syscall, you'd still you'd do your copy from user, nothing changes. Um, but if you're gonna make a syscall aware, like sec comp aware in this case, then you need to switch to a copy from user or give me the pointer to where this is cached. Um, and then on entry to these, syscalls, seccomp has made a copy for doing its checking, and then the syscall is checking it also, so there become, there, you end up with a conditional in the syscall for deciding which side, like which, where to find it. Can't we have copy from user to it from yeah. That would be my preference, because boy, I'd hate to have one missed. Well, yeah, and yeah, then okay. we have a copy yeah, from yeah. user. Think about every single copy from user that enters the kernel. Does that one need the extra condition, or can we make copy from user just to begin with. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So, so what, what I was what I was thinking is effectively that you would I mean it, it would require it would waste an extra copy, but it would mean that you wouldn't have this possible bug where um, effectively you would store the pointer and the size in struct task, and then when you do a copy from user or whatever, it would look at oh okay, do we have yeah. any cached? We have is it, it here. Range? Go get it from if there. yes, then copy from there. Otherwise, copy from the actual right. thing. Um, and because yeah, be, otherwise it's it's like a security issue waiting to happen. Like someone's yeah. gonna miss it at some point. Yeah, like uh, ideal, the ideal situation would be that for syscalls that want to opt in, the only information they're actually doing is they're just providing what are the two arguments, and the syscall body wouldn't have to change. Would be like the ideal situation. Um, yeah. Cool. So basically, it's a sort of a new entry hook that will always copy on entry and sec like into a place where seccomp can use it. And then the syscall is unconditionally changed to no longer have a copy from user. It just refers uh, to that. Well, no, no, no. You, you could make yeah. it so it only does the copy if you're in seccom. Like, but because so like copy from user would check is the thing um, right. cached or not. So you could make it so it, it has no effect on regular systems with no seccom um, yeah. extensible filter. I mean, we can also make it so it does nothing even if on systems where you have seccom where the filter does not. 
uh, use the thing. I, mean, I don't know, I don't know how far we want to go with it, but like you I, could I, make I, that optimization. I, yeah, it'd be interesting. I, I'm, f I'm I'm not creative enough to think of a way to make happy with copy from users since it's used so extensively everywhere. But yeah, I think a, a universal copy ahead of time that SecComp uses and the other thing uses is also relatively clean because then you don't end up with an accidental situation. Yeah. Because you've removed the copy from user entirely from the syscall. It can only ever use the cached one. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Majority of users. Majority of, uh, the majority of users will not care about this, uh, meaning this will only be a very select few uh, system calls. Well, I mean, we're getting more of this, but uh, in, in general, like most copy from, from user or copy to user users will not be affected by this. So I hope this will, if at all, will be a dedicated, like separate helper kind of thingy that these need to call. Like they need to, be, need to opt into this anyway, right? Yeah, I mean, so, um, uh, so the thing is, if, if it's if the uh, because this is only going to be at least for the syscalls that we want, it'll only be for copy start from user. Like it would be the case that co only copy start from user in this particular context would matter. Um, if someone is like doing a copy user from like the middle of the structure or something, um, but the thing is, like if we store what the pointer was and what like what block we cache, like. Um, it, it's a po it's a point to like addition comparison to see whether whether or not the thing you're trying to copy is in that block, um, and like yeah I uh, uh, like yeah like we could just make it so that it's it's you have to change your helpers to do the thing but it it seems like um, in practice just making it so copy start from user or or copy user um, co uh, copy from user um, just. So like checks against an RB tree or whatever. I mean, there's, only gonna be, there's only gonna be one entry, so it's like one check to see whether that's uh, uh, it. Those one checks, like I can tell you, they might make a difference, <laughs> uh, especially where that stuff is used. Um, so, and we, we, because we have been doing like some pretty uh, aggressive performance uh, optimizations recently, and there are some people who are really have a really watchful eye on uh, any new atomic or pointer chase that gets added. Um, Are you threatening the only, me? <laughs> the, only, the only thing that I see, like, the, we've been living with uh, extensible structures now for, uh, for a while, and a bunch of these system calls have been adopted, and it's probably still an issue for, for some container workloads, but a part of me s starts to wonder if this is really not something that, that, that like, something like Landblock is better equipped to deal with. I mean, I, I heard that this argument, this argument has been made before, but it's, I just, want to mention this again as one potential solution because this is a baroque machinery for uh, to solve this sort of uh, yeah problem I mean, uh, so like my view is that I think that it yeah. makes uh, it makes like little sense for open at two to like honestly I think that everyone should just allow open at two with no because like th there is no like circumstance in which an open flag would cause a severe security issue right but like for clone three you need to block mount uh, clone new blah right so um uh, oh, like honestly, I think, yeah. The problem is that there are cases where I think that there is a strong need for it, at least in principle. And even even if the case is like two two members long, right? I don't know. Yeah, I also kind of feel like like cases like clone three are things that are not really fit for like the. I mean, at least semantically, they don't really fit. Uh, a landlock that well, I think, because landlock is like supposed to be more about like restricting access to resources than about re restricting like uh, what kind of system call attack service you can hit, which is more second. But I guess that's more of a semantics thing than even I guess maybe it could still be a hammer that fits it well. Uh, one question I had about the like uh, a case size versus effective size thing is can we. Uh, avoid uh, having to deal with the effective uh, size stuff and instead make it so that if you load a filter that tries to access fields that are beyond the case size, we just add filter load time, replace all of the loads with like um, load zero immediates, uh, and then we could, uh, and then I, I think we could avoid having to like figure out if the size that user space is passing in is like one of the like valid sizes. Uh Right, but the um, so that would help with a with a with a newer filter on an older kernel, right? Yes. But the the problem is an older filter on a newer kernel. So how like so if you have a um, 
if you have, uh, let's say, clone three adds a new field that is like, give me root or something, right? And uh, you have a filter from before then that doesn't know about it, and then now you load the same filter on a kernel that has it, how would the filter verify that the extra features are not enabled, like the extra features are not set? Yeah, sure, you um, still need to check to like, uh, see like uh, starting at which, which offset are the bits zero. But right. I don't think you'd need like a list of like known uh, uh, sizes for that. I think it would okay, be yeah. enough to. Oh, right, yeah, so to, to remove the need for the like if checks and stuff, it would just be automatically done. Uh, like, so like basically these ifs would become, would disappear and like at, at load time they would be removed is the idea. So I'll, I'm not sure what I'm thinking about right now. I'll just give the mic back for now. <laughs> just to be clear, we're way into break, uh, <laughs> but that's fine. We've got a bunch of, uh, we've got a break time to have chats. The question here somewhere. Yep. Okay. Um, about the the clone fee use case. So yeah, as uh, Jan pointed to before, um, in, well, I'd be happy to. That's kind of different, well, kind of different complement use case, but um, that would make sense to have this kind of restriction to be able, well, for, for a landlock to be able to enforce on a set of threads. So if, if that is a, kind of the main issue with, uh, for instance, for container runtime is to block a whole syscalls because they could do some weird stuff. Uh, well, we might think about extending landlock to protect against this weird stuff too. So that might be another one, an alternative to second filtering extended arguments. I mean, so the, the, um, uh, the thing with second filtering is that like, uh, there are many things you can restrict with LSMs. The problem is, is that the main thing that second gives you is that it, it allows you to eliminate like whole swaths of attack surface yeah, from I the agree. UVI, so, which is like a different problem. So like, I think that, I think Christian's right in that like there are a lot of things that it doesn't make sense to try to filter with SecOM. I mean, people have talked about filtering paths with SecOM and stuff like that, I think that doesn't make sense. Um, uh, but like, in the particular case of like, um, you can make the argument, I guess, that like when people are filtering um, SecOM, the, uh, filtering SecOM, that what they actually want is they just want to like, if they have a syscall they don't trust, they want to limit it entirely. But the thing is that like with SecOM, you can filter fields for like filter flags for a reason because like that is actually quite useful. I mean, um, with the LSM thing, I mean like there wasn't a way to restrict cloning username spaces um, for a very long time, and SecOM was the way we fixed that problem. Um, and like, there's going to be problems. Like, I mean, if we continue to add more syscalls that have extensible structs, which I hope we do because it has benefits, but there's going to be many more cases like that where it's not clear how you would evolve all the LSMs to block that thing. When, like, in practice, from a container perspective, we just want to like not have to deal with it effectively. So my main uh, thing is, if we if we end up doing something like this, then most of the like all of the ugliness should live in seccomp itself. And uh, ideally, like the system calls that we end up filtering, uh, they have to do as little magic as possible. Yeah. Um, because and so that this doesn't become an argument against uh, uh, extensible structs, essentially. Yeah, well. Because like if, if people say like, then we don't do extensible structs anymore if this is such a problem. But then I don't want to add like except five or open tree nine <laughs> because somebody forgot something like they yeah. this is the, they gave us a lot of value in in designing new system calls yeah uh, and uh, they're pretty valuable in my opinion yeah so like it, it, is it um I, I do wonder so is the problem with uh, so i agree things should from my perspective the thing that would make it the least objectionable is if like a syscall you write today with copy struct from user would look identical with this new thing. It's just that when you define the syscall, you would say syscall define yeah, yeah. filterable whatever like yeah yeah yeah, yeah like, I think that's a, that's I think that's, that's that would be the ideal reasonable yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, because for, like uh, there is there are other system calls that qualify as extensible like statics that you just don't want to filter you just don't care about yeah. them. Uh, we could, I mean, you could do it because you could, um, um, uh, you could, uh, once, if once they're all defined, you could just look at the list and, I bet, I
Yeah. I mean, you could add a, there could be a define or something when you define a new uh, extensible struct so that it's somehow visible and then you can figure it out at build time using, I don't know, PA hole or whatever. Yeah. So I think I, I think Jan's suggestion was what I was saying is so the problem with the problem with doing that is that now a newer filter on an older kernel would fail to load, which is what Jan's suggestion would help with, which is that you would be able to load it, which just clear out the loads that are past the thing. Yeah, I like that idea. I, yeah, I um, yeah, I think that um, yeah, if we can do the overriding, I think that that makes things simpler. I mean, it's still ugly, but um, it at least it at least should solve those problems. I suspect. Uh, and then the verify would well, the, the verify wouldn't have to, because you would just clear the stuff that's outside. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now it's implemented. <laughs>